Good morning, everybody. Hello, good morning, everybody. Today I will be sharing with you. Um, hopefully, this is a start of our subject, which is the agribusiness commodity system or AGSC4. Again, I'm your uh, professor, Guillermo P. Desengano. Uh, I decided to record this presentation with the uh, apprehension that during our uh, regular meeting, which is by on Monday, where there is a scheduled uh, storm coming in. So I decided today, which is the night before, to record my presentation so that it will be easier for you to to listen and go back whenever you want to listen back to my presentation. So, let us start with understanding agribusiness commodity. But first, let's talk about what is agribusiness. In this book, Agribusiness, which is actually a book written by a Malaysian, it, it says that agribusiness is an industry engaged in the operations of a farm, the processing, manufacturing, and distributing of farm products. It includes all the activities within the agricultural food and natural resource industry involved in the production of food and fiber. The business involves all the steps required to send an agricultural good to market, production, processing, and distribution. So, to explain it, yung agribusiness is uh, actually it's a huge operation. It's a large, it encompasses a large scope where from production, processing of agricultural product until distribution, yun yung na, na kasama ng buong agriculture business or agribusiness. Further, agricultural business, also known as agribusiness, is the farming, management, production, and marketing of agricultural commodities such as livestock and crops. The agricultural business field includes resource management, farming, conservation, ranching, and sales. As technology has progressed and markets have become increasingly global, agricultural business has developed to meet and solve high-tech farming needs and problems. So, uh, Continuing, the term is a combination of agriculture and business and was coined in 1957 by John Davis and Ray Goldberg. Agribusiness includes agrochemicals, breeding, crop production, such as farming or contract farming, distribution, farm machinery, processing, and seed supply, as well as marketing and retail sales. In the picture, you can see displays of herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, veterinary medicines, fumigants used in rural situations, and agricultural use of detergents and sanitizers, except those used in dairying. So, malaki ang negosyo actually sa agribusiness. Ano? It's not only planting and raising animals, pero yung mga um mga tindahan mga suppliers nitong mga nabanggit natin kanina are all included doon sa agribusiness so kung kayo later on would go into uh, business not necessarily you go to farming but you can come up with uh, maybe an agri supply or veterinary supply at kasama rin yung sa agribusiness so it also involves marketing and sales. So 
yung ilan niya, hindi na sila nag-raise uh, ng, ng crops or ng, any products, but rather, naging, ano lang sila, middleman. At maraming iba naging successful dyan. At yun ay included pa rin doon sa agribusiness. It is important din ang marketing and sales because this is the tool where one product can be introduced sa market to the end user para magkaroon ng idea or ng information at mabili yung kanilang uh, products. Also, an agribusiness, in terms of academic, there are academic degrees specializing in agribusiness or Department of Agribusiness, Agribusiness Trade Associations, and Agribusiness Publications. In fact, sa University of the Philippines, meron talagang Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness Management and Entrepreneurship. Sa Kabsu, previously, so many years before, meron ding agribusiness but it was later on transformed into business management. No? Right now, uh, sa KPNR, wala, wala talaga noong kurso ng agribusiness but what we have is agricultural entrepreneurship. No? Kayo, uh, BSA, Merong, merong isang, actually there are three sections right now who are taking agricultural entrepreneurship. Now, since our topic is agricultural commodity or agribusiness commodity, let us try to understand first what is a commodity. A commodity is a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other goods of the same type. Commodities are most often used as inputs in the production of the goods or services. The quality of a given commodity may differ slightly, but it is essentially uniform across producers. When they are traded on an exchange, commodities must also meet specified minimum standards, also known as a basis grade. They tend to change rapidly from year to year. As I explained earlier, I think in some section, um, the, the global standard right now, pagdating sa mga agricultural commodities, uh, nagseset sila ng minimum standard para maging acceptable yung mga products na yun sa greater population. Meaning, nagiging choosy na rin ang mga, mga consumer ngayon. For example, many agricultural products right now are uh, termed as healthy or specifically not, not so healthy. Kaya nga lumabas yung mga organic products because some of our consumer right now are conscious of yung health issues. Kaya sa lumabas ngayon sa agriculture, yung matinatawag na uh, good agricultural uh, procedure or gap kung saan lahat ng step sa farming ay tinitingnan nila yung health issue, yung traceability upang makasigurado na yung product na mamamanufacture o mare-raise o mag-grow ng farmer would be safe for human consumption. At ang sinasabi rito ngayon, the global uh, industry ay palaging nagseset na ngayon ng standards that tend to change rapidly from year to year. Ang isang sample niyan ay katulad ng ginawa sa Cavite State University kung saan nag, nag, nag uh, commission tayo ng isang private in private group upang uh, tingnan ang ating proseso kaya nga meron tayo ng ISO, no? Doon sa ISO na yun, tinitingnan noong private group na yun kung yung bang proseso natin ay nakakasunod doon sa itinatakda ng uh, 
almost parang global to. Lahat ng lahat ng bansa, lahat ng kumpanya kapag ikaw ay nagpa-undergo dito sa ISO process, almost similar ang inyong requirement. And good to know that Cavite State University in 2019 have received its uh, ISO certification. And just recently, I think na, uh, less than a month ago, yung second year after 2019, which is 2020, nagkaroon uli ng audit, meaning titingnan ng certifying agency kung yung bang ating mga ginawa na ipinangako at nakitang ginagawa ay itinuloy pa rin. At kung may nakitang kakulangan, ginawan ba ng adjustment or naremedyohan ba yon And glad to tell you all na ang Cavite State University again is given the certification that uh, on the second year tayo ay walang nakita ang certifying agency ng anumang pagkukulang kaya tayo ay uh, masasabing talagang ISO certified. At yun, taon-taon uh, ginagawa yun, sini, uh, ino audit kung tuloy pa rin ba yung ating pag-improve sa ating mga proseso. Kaya ako nabanggit yun dahil ang global requirement ngayon, almost sa lahat ng mga produkto, hindi lang sa agriculture, eh ganun na ka-stricto. Uh, kaya nga minsan nahihirapan ang ating bansa, ang Pilipinas, sa pag-export ng ating mga produkto dahil hindi tayo kaagad-agad na makaagapay o maka-penetrate maka sa global market because yung mga requirement na hinihingi ng, ng tong global uh, grade na yan, eh minsan nahihirapan tayong i-comply. Kaya nga from the beginning, nag-start na tayo na pag-aralan nyo yun. Ano ba ang quality na makakapasa sa global standard? So, going back, commodity is actually parang paninda nga yan. Paninda sa palengke, it could be um, meat, all types of foods, ano-anong paninda nakikita mo. Those are commodities, but uh, commodities can be uh, classified into food and non-food. So, later on, we will be uh, discussing in detail. Ano, ano ba itong mga commodities nito? But because based on this uh, initial slide, you know, commodities can be gold, can be uh, fuel, can be lumber, could be uh, any anything of value na ginagamit sa pagmamanufacture ng other, other goods. It could be an element, could be sugar, could be anything that uh, human is consuming. But uh, going further, we are now um, downsizing our definition into agricultural commodity. So we, we live behind oil, we live behind uh, other commodities that doesn't fall under agricultural commodities. And to um, define what is agriculture, agricultural commodities, they are staple crops and animals produced or raised on farms or plantations. The key word here is staple, meaning ito yung halos araw-araw na kinakain, na kailangan, especially kung food yan, yan yung pang-araw-araw natin uh, kinakain. Now, sa Pilipinas, ang staple natin, ay everybody knows, is rice, but uh, other parts of the world, let's say in America, their, their staple food is not rice, but rather bread. Bread at uh, sari-saring mga palaman. It could be cheese, bacon, ham, etc. Because yun yung kanilang uh, staple food, as if uh, imagine McDonald's or Jollibee. Ganun yung kanilang staple. But uh, in the Philippines, you know what is our staple. Most agricultural commodities such as grains, livestock, and dairy provide a source of food for people and animals across the globe. What you're seeing here is a wheat field. Etong tanim na to, actually, ay hindi makikita rito sa Pilipinas or probably merong mga ilang experimentation na ginagawa but not on a large scale. Siguro baka tinatry din sa Pilipinas but 
for so long, uh, I haven't heard uh, wheat being planted here in the Philippines. But but why? Why? Ano bang important importance ng wheat? Eh, ito lang naman ang pinagkukuhan ng harina na ginagawang pandesal na kinakain natin araw-araw. Ng tasty, ng gardenia, all comes from wheat. Therefore, yung atin palang kinakain na yan, ang raw materials niyan is an imported materials from wheat. The term commodity is commonly used in reference to basic agricultural products that are either in their original form or have undergone only primary processing. So in this picture, as an example, it is palay and rice. After the palay is harvested, it could uh, pass doon sa mga machineries, milling, to, to form what is known as rice. I think it's also aimed to become kanin, na staple food natin. So, that is a basic agricultural products. Pero kung yung rice na yan, let's say malagkit yan, ginawa mo ng kuchinta, ginawa mo ng cake, uh, hindi na siya magiging kasama sa ating commodity na pag-uusapan because it has already undergone probably secondary or tertiary processing. What we are um what we are what we will be talking are just the primary processing yung yung scope lang ngayon thus with the particular grade and with respect to a given variety commodities coming from different suppliers and even different countries or continents are ready substitutes for one another for example to varieties of coffee or coffee beans such as robusta and Arabica do have differing characteristics, but two robustas from different continents will, within the same grade band, have identical characteristics in all important aspects. Ibig sabihin lang, yung kinuha mong binili mong kape from Brazil or binili mong kape from Vietnam, kung pareho sila ng variety na robusta, eh, Pwede silang, ano, pwede kang kumuha sa Vietnam, pwede kang kumuha sa Brazil. Kung meron mang konting difference is hindi masyadong uh, okay lang yon So, kaya kaya naman ito nabanggit itong ganito because later on you would understand bakit, bakit kung kukuha ka sa Brazil, bakit iniisip mo pang kumuha sa Vietnam? Tamaya, makikita niyo kung bakit. Merong ganong uh, way ang mga ang trade kung saan namimili ka kung saan ka pupuha. Kahit parehong-pareho na yung kape na uh, iyong kinukonsume. Agricultural commodities are generic, meaning wala kang brand. Undifferentiated. Hindi mo nga malaman kung saan galing unless meron nakalagay doon na produce or product of China or product of Vietnam or Brazil undepreciated products that, since they have no other distinguishing and marketable characteristics, compete with one another on the basis of price. Yun yung binabanggit ko kanina, bakit ka bibili sa Vietnam at ka bibili sa Brazil? The reason is on the basis of price. Alam naman natin kung saan mura at pareho naman ang quality niya, pareho lasa, then you go for the lower price because business yan. The lower the price, the better you can sell it at the lower cost and then you, you gain an upper hand pagdating sa competition. Commodities contrast sharply with those products which have been given a trademark or branded in order to communicate their marketable differences. So ito, mga products na ito, ay hindi pa siya nabigyan ng, ng mga trademark. Uh, kunyari, asukal, pag nakita mo yung asukal na puti, kahit anong brand yan, bibilin mo yan kasi pareho lang yan. Ganun pa rin katamisyon. But when coffee is branded into Starbucks, then it is only ready being communicated for marketable differences. Ika nga, 
Okay. Kaya ako umiinom ng Starbucks is because of the experience. So doon na nag- nagkakaroon ng mga value adding ang proseso na yan. But uh, what we are right now is uh, doon lang tayo sa primary processing. Next would be other agricultural commodities have purely industrial applications. So, hindi naman ito mga pagkain. Let's say the building and furniture industries use lumber from trees. By the way, yung lumber ay kapag yan ay eh, ano na yan, mga dos por dos, dos por cuatro, lumber ang tawag dyan. Kaya pag pumunta kayo sa mga tindahan ng ganyan, lumber yon. Pero pag ano ba yung timber, yung puno, kapag itinumba mo, pinutol mo siya, sinakay mo sa truck, timber yon. Then dadali mo na sa sawmill, paglabas noon, lumber. Ibig sabihin na putol-putol na siya, na slice na siya into several uh, dimensions. Ano? Dos por dos, dos por cuatro, sa is por is. Then you call it lumber. While manufacturers in several sectors uses latex from the rubber tree. So meron din dito sa Pilipinas, actually sa Mindanao yan, it, it is called rubber tree. Slowly, kapag uh, slice mo yung bark nitong puno na ito, it will exude, lalabas yung, yung latex, yung dakta na kulay puti. Yung cup na yon is used to collect the sap. No? Hindi ko lang alam kung gano'ng kabilis mapuno yan, but the process is something like that. And they will uh, collect it, bring it to collecting stations, send it to uh, the, the plant na naging process niyan to further come out as a rubber. Ang rubber, alam natin, ang, ang largest use niyan is tire ng sasakyan. Another uh, non-agricultural food is wool from sheep. No? Again, hindi tayo masyadong familiar dito kasi this, this type of product ay makikita lang natin ito probably in other parts of the world. Uh, since uh, Middle East, maraming alagang ganito. And they are being harvested then. But let's say in Europe and America, uh, very familiar ang ganitong produkto. And also, meron din itong tinatawag na lanolin na kukuha para siyang wax doon sa, maybe siguro doon sa uh, balat ng hayop na to. At ito ay ginagamit for skincare. I don't know how it is extracted. Anyway, let's continue. Some agricultural commodities serve as uh, both a source of food and an industrial ingredient. Both humans and animals consume corn, but the commodity is also an important ingredient in fuel production. Uh, yeah. It happened before, this is the Philippines, when I, I think siguro mga five years ago, when the price of oil extremely goes up, talagang napakamahal na. In fact, uh, kukumpit kami noon, kung may kotse ka from Hindang, pupunta ka ng presa at babalik ka, you would probably consume 100 peso worth of gasoline. Eh, ang pamasahe lang noon is 8 peso. So, maraming mga uh, mga may sasakyan noon, I'd rather ride the jeep because yung napakamahal na presyo ng gasolina. And true, ang mga tao talaga are adjusting to it. Naghahanap uh, sila ng paraan para hindi naman sila maging very dependent to sa high cost ng fuel na yon. So, ang uh, mga scientists have actually derived a few well from corn sa mais. Okay? At yun ay naggamit pa nga actually yan na pwedeng pang patakbo ng sasakyan. No? There, all, there was always a time during that period na masyadong mahal na lang is dito sa Pilipinas, yung mga taxi driver, yung kanilang makina ng sasakyan ay kinonvert nila na ang gatong ay LPG yung ginagamit natin sa kalan. So meron din uh, station noon, papakarga ka ng LPG. So, itong uh, corn naman ay nakakakuha ng, ng actually alcohol to. 
Um, tawag ethanol at it could could run vehicles no so ganun talaga ang ano ganun ang economics ng if if the if any products ay kahit ganun siya ka useful pero prohibited na ang kanyang price then the market would will adjust no ang mga tao mag-iisip ng alternative na mas mura na ganun din naman ang magiging epekto or serbisyo sa tao So, kung matatanong nyo, bakit ang mga products eh, meron ding hangganan ang kanilang pag-akyat ng presyo? It is because ang mga tao, kung sa palagay nila, masyado ng prohibitive ang price, eh, magpapalit na sila ng, o hindi na nila ikukonsume, o hindi na nila gagamitin. Let's say, ang presyo ng baka could, uh, pwedeng mag, kunyari, umabot siya ng 800 to 1,000 per kilo, Siyempre, konti ang kakakain ng baka, pero ang mangyayari doon, yung consumption ng baka mapapaltan, bibili na lang sila ng pork kasi ang pork hindi nagbago ang presyo. Pero kung ang pork ay tumaas din ang tumaas, then people would ship to, let's say, sa sa poultry, o sa manok. Yun, ganun, ganun nag a ang market. Then, why are agricultural commodity important? Virtually every living being on the planet depends on the agricultural industry in one way or another. We eat the grains, fruits, vegetables, and livestock that farmers produce, build the frames of our houses from lumber, make clothes from cotton and wool, and ride cars with tires made from rubber. In addition, over 1.3 billion people, namin nito, nearly 20% of the, of the global population work in farming. In some regions of the world, such as South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, farming employs more people than any other industry. So, ang lupa, ang ng sakahan, ang pag-aalaga ng hayop ay ganun ka-importante dahil 20% eh, ng mga tao dyan kumukuha ng livelihood probably ay mas marami dyan yung uh, sila ay worker na sumusweldo sa uh, kung sino may ari ng, ng business. The global impact of the agricultural industry is enormous according to the food and agricultural organization of the United Nations, the economic value of the agriculture industry in constant $2010 is more than $3 trillion. Ganon karami siro ba yung trillion? Ay, yung, yung billion niya, hindi ko na mabilang eh, yung pan-trillion. Ano? Imagine ninyo lang, ganon karaming pera yan. And this is very, very important to know, the world population growth. With the world population expected to climb from 7.5 billion, uh, 7.5 billion na tao, magiging 11.8 billion by 2100, or year 2100, agricultural commodities are likely to play an even bigger role in the decades ahead. But this is something like medyo bleak ang scenario rito. Hindi magandang tingnan ito if we are looking at it on the economic point of view. Why? In economics, it is said that uh, ito mga resources na ito, they are not, uh, nauubo sila. They are not finite. I, I, I mean, uh, merong hangganan. Let's say ang resources ng oil na uubos din. No? Ang resources ng isda na uubos din. Ang lupa na taniman ng uh, sari-saring crops ay na uubos din because of the land conversion. No? Yung mga resources, even water na uubos. At uh, totoo yan dahil dito sa Cavite there was a study conducted by KPNR that um, some 
as early as 2018, eh, meron ng tinatawag na water crisis sa Cavite because they um, actually computed that the extraction noong groundwater, ibig sabihin yung pagkuha ng groundwater, yung water na nado sa ilalim ng ating tinutuntungan ngayon, at yun ay press water na yun. Nakukuha kasi yan by drilling uh, ng poso. No? Mas malakas yung pag, ano, pagkuha doon kaysa sa pag-replenish. Ang replenish niyan ay through rain. Pero sabi nung study na yun, yung rain, eh hindi lahat yun pupunta sa water table. Hindi siya magsisip doon sa, sa lupa para pumunta sa water table. And there are only specific areas dito sa Cavite kung saan yung patak ng ulan doon, kay yun lang ang pupunta sa water table o yung malinis na tubig na yun na, pinang, na nakakakuha tayo doon ng mga inumin. No? At yun ay sa silang Tagaytay and Magallanes. But sad to say, may mga, mga high resolution map na, na nakikita ngayon, may even Google map, na marami ng areas kung saan dapat sana yung patak ng ulan doon ay pupunta sa ating water table. Ang nangyayari dyan ay hindi na nakakapenetrate because they are being cemented, converted into roads or housing projects. Kaya ang nangyari, yung ating water table ay umuunti ng umuunti at ang isang manifestations niyan, yung mga spring or bukal ay unti-unting nawawala. Uh, also on that study, no, dyan daw sa Amadeo ay nag, nawala na yung mga ilang bukal dyan. At uh, ibig sabihin yung water table mo ba na but uh, uh, good to say na sa indang ay ano pa tayo, maganda pa yung ating water table. Ang point ko doon is this, no? if you can imagine, yung graph na yun na paakyat ang population, and mag-imagine ka ng isang graph na galing sa taas, pababa, parang baligtad siya. At yun yung resources. Yung resources dati marami, pero over a period of time, siya ay uunti ng uunti. And then, you know, probably you know what could be the result. If, this, if the resource is water, uunti ang tubig samantalang dadami ang, um, cons ang consumer. If it is land na tinatamnan ng ating mga crops, uunti at dadami ang tao, then we have some form of food crisis. Yun yung ating bleak scenario nakikita dyan. Kaya nga, as young as you are on, on the uh, agriculture industry, dapat kayo ay open-minded na rito sa mga ganito at maging active participant sa pagbabantay ng ating natural resources. So what are the different agricultural commodities na ating bang kanina pang pinag-uusapan? Ano-ano ba yan mga yan? So there are six categories of agricultural commodities. Some books, some uh, websites are uh, maraming sinasabing iba-ibang commodities pero sabi nitong nakbuha ko from one site. Sabi niya, dalawa lang naman yan, food or non-food. But under the food, you have the cereals and grains which is kasama dyan ng wheat, corn, oats, barley, and wrap rice. Merong isang tinatawag ng oil seeds kung saan yung mga mga seeds na yan ay nakukuha na ng langis, mantika, ah, not mantika, but cooking oil. I mean, they, they could be canola. Ah, yan, di natin alam kung ano yung canola because wala rito yung, yung lang tanim dito ng canola. Cotton seeds, I, I, I know cotton. Yung buto noon could be converted into feeds or may nakukuha ng oil dyan. And then palm, palm oil. Sa Pilipinas, may mga kaunti ng uh, harvest ng palm oil, but our neighboring country like uh, in Malaysia, sa Saba, ay talagang napakarami nitong tanim ng maraming plantation ng palm oil. No? And soybeans. Soybeans is very important dahil alam naman natin, dyan galing ang taho, ang toyo, ang, uh, yung hinakain natin mga tokwa, 
ay from soybeans ano at yung sapal niyan o yung uh, extract niyan ay pwede pang ihalo as feeds for livestock no so cereals grains oil seed and then comes meat no under the meat you have the feeder cattle yung feeder cattle simula yun sa maliit na cattle yung baka maybe three or four months patatabi and then they sell it or probably slaughter it then you have the live cattle yung live cattle ano na ito ready for slaughtering na so they have already reached the marketable uh, weight niya and then the hogs or lean hogs and pork bellies ano ba yung pork bellies yan yung game po but why so important Dahil yan yung ginagawang ham at sa US kasi and other countries sa Europe, probably other rich countries, eh, malimit kumain sila ng bacon. Not not ham, but, but rather bacon. O yung malutong, yung very thin sliced na pork belly o yung jempo, eh, i-cured yan. No? Then pag prito mo, saglit na saglit lang, medyo malutong yun. At yan ay isa sa mga commodity na highly market, marketed especially on other countries na medyo rich ano? now after the meat you have the dairy at kasama dyan ang gatas butter, whey and cheese sa Pilipinas ang hina ng ating uh, milk production sa general trias uh, noong kausapin ko yung mga farmer doon eh, between 5 to 8 liters per day per cow sa Visayas ano, especially do sa Visayas State University where, where happened to be there and talk to the former president sabi niya kami sa buong Pilipinas sa may mga may pinakamataas na production ng ng milk per per head or per cow sila inaabot ng 15 doon sabi ko ay bakit po ganun bakit mas ma lakas kaya ang inyong production. Uh, sabi niya, we could not uh, actually explain it but rather guess. Dahil daw sa um, doon sa party na yon ng ng Visayas ay eh, napakalimit ng ulan. Uh, talagang sobrang daw ang tubig doon which is probably the reason na kung ang baka ay eh, araw-araw kumakain ng ng uh, damo na laging nare-replenish na didilik, eh baka yun na nakakapag-increase daw ng, ano, ng milk production. But wala yan kasi doon sa sa I don't know kung anong bansa sa Middle East kasi may kaklase ako before na nakapag-work doon. Sabi niya, eh doon na yung baka na ginagatasan namin could produce, could produce more than 60 liters per cow per, per day. 60 liters? Eh tayo, 50 ang pinakamata sila, 60. Sabi ka, baka naman gatas na rin ang pinaiinom ni John. Ang Pilipinas ay hindi tayo sanay kumain o uminom ng gatas. That's the reason why pagdating sa built ng ating katawan, hindi tayo kasing lalaki ng mga European countries, ng Americans or other because sa kanila kasi eh, mahilig sila sa gatas. Tayo, nagagatas lang um, per year, siguro. No? After that, hindi na. Kanin na lang tayo ng kanin. So, yun yung isang reason. No? And we have other sub-commodities like cocoa o yung cacao, coffee, frozen, concentrated orange juice. Bakit napasama dyan ang orange juice? It's because sa uh, countries like in the United States, eh, rich nga sila. Kapag sila'y nag-almusal o nag-merienda, eh, hindi sila bibili noong basta-basta na soft drinks lang. They want the press or concentrated orange juice. Talagang halos, ano siya, halos talagang parang pinigam mo na juice. Parang press pa rin siya. No? Eh, tayo, ano, uh, binibili lang natin yung mga... Uh, Ano na yan? Timpla-timpla lang. Tang, matinimplang mukhang o lasang orange juice. And finally, included dyan ang sugar. And then, yung last number six is falling under the non-food. Hindi ito pagkain, but called miscellaneous agricultural commodities such as lumber, rubber, and wool. 
So going back, uh, babalikan natin itong mga bawat uh, commodities na ito, cereal grains, these are par the farmers grow these commodities for as food for humans, or food for food source for animals, and also feedstock for fuels in some cases. Yung nabanggit ko kanina na ethanol from corn. Most common grain commodities are wheat, corn, oats, barley, rap rice. Sa Pilipinas, ang atin lang tinatanim ay corn and rap rice. The reason why I included this and as an introduction to you, may chance kasi kayo na mag-work uh, sa mga multinationals at baka isang araw mapadala kayo abroad, uh, mabuti na, na alam nyo kung ano to. Ano yung wheat, ano yung barley at ano yung oats. No? So, these green commodities often serve similar purposes. For example, corn, oats, and barley all functions as food source for livestock. Depending on price, farmers will choose one grain over the other. As a result, most grain commodities have a strong price relationship with one another. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na kapag tumaas ng sobra, ang presyo ng isang commodity, let's say, ang, ang corn ay tumaas ng masyado dahil kakunti na harvest, uh, magpapalit sila ng, ng alternative doon. Kasi, ang mayayari doon, mag-i-increase ang cost of yung selling price ng, ng feeds pagkatapos ipapasa ng mga farmer sa presyo ng kanilang uh, karni at pagkatapos ipapasa sa uh, retail price ng karni at ang mangyayari doon magkakaroon ng pagtaas ng presyo or inflation at yun ang mga iniiwasan natin because yun yung pagbaba ng value ng ating pera because uh, tumaas dahil tumaas ang cost of production. Kaya nga sa mga manufacturer, eh, lagi silang ready or familiar sa mga the substitutable products. Anong pwedeng ipalit doon? So, traders monitor the spread between grain prices to determine the relative value of one grain versus another. The second category is oil seeds. No? Farmers grow them for high oil content in their seeds and the meal that remains after oil is extracted. So, ito ay soy beans or soya beans. Uh, sa Pilipinas, hindi masyadong mataas ang production natin. If you simula rin tayo, pero ano kasi, yung nabibili sa coming from mga imported natin, masyadong superior ang kanilang uh, production. Malalaki, marami na kukuha. Eh, yung sa Pilipinas kasi when we tried that, uh, hindi, hindi tayo ano, Parang lugi tayo kapag uh, tataas ang presyo tapos ang kanyang quality eh hindi kasing ganda nung galing sa abroad na mas mura pa ang presyo. So hindi nagiging economical ang pagtatanim ng soybeans dito sa Pilipinas. Although I heard before na mayroong mga initiatives and Department of Agriculture na magtanim ng soybeans pero very small scale lang ang mga nag-start at hindi siya magkakaroon ng epekto sa sa atin as uh, as a na national production ay napakababa talaga. And uh, meron tayo noong canola oil na nabanggit ko kanina at ito mismo yung kung namamalengke kayo sa mga supermarkets ano merong nabibiling canola oil no. Di ba meron nung palm oil, meron nung coconut oil at meron yung canola oil. No? So, tingnan nyo yung picture na yan, kala mo mustasa. Namumunga rin yan yung pads at yung buton ngayon yan ang nag, doon nag extract ng uh, oil. By the way, lahat ng mga pinapakita ko rito, you can read more at uh, the site na nakalagay dyan sa slide na yan. I encourage you to, to click on that. Cotton, the plant fibers have their own important market in the clothing and houseware industries. No? Bulak, no? alam nyo na yun kung saan ginagamit yan. Uh, medis, uh, sa, ano yan, sa uh, 
pagdating sa mga hospitals yan, sugat, no? Farmers use the seeds from uh, these crops in animal feeds. Nung bata pa ako, nakakakita ko may mga tanim niya na tumutubo lang yan sa mga tabing bakon. At uh, minsan yung ginagamit namin ng bulak. Pero uh, I, I never realized na yung palang buti niya ay nakaka-extract yan ng mga, mga oil. No? And uh, for your information, the largest cotton producing country is China. It has 100,000 cotton farmers, 7,500 textile companies, and $73 billion in annual cotton cloth production. Si laki kasi ng China. So, yung uh, cotton seed could be used as feed for livestock at meron nakukuha rin cotton seed oil ginagamit siya for soap, margarine, emulsifiers, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, rubber, and plastics. Dami pa lang gamit. Wala ko patapo na. And then palm oil is used in everything from good uh, from food products to detergents, mga sabon, to cosmetics. It is even increasingly being used as biofuel. No? The size of the global market for palm oil is expected to reach more than $90 billion by 2021. Kapit pahay natin Malaysia, Indonesia are growing thousands of hectares of this palm oil. Tayo sa Pilipinas ay konti-konti pa lang tayo rito. Talagay ko sa Mindanao, marami nang nagtatalin ng palm oil. Laking industry siya. And then the third category is meat. Meat commodities include live animals raised for meat, hide, Hide is the balat, uh, ginagawang kwero or, uh, or ayong, uh, leather, organs, laman loob, bones, uh, bones, binigiling yan, pwedeng source ng calcium, and hooves, yung kuko ng paa. Cuts of meat produced during the butchering of animals, yan ang mga uh, category under that. Meat. The feeder cattle are, itong nabanggit ko kanina, pinapalaki yan until na sila ay pwede nang katayin. Yun namang isang klase, eh, live cattle, nag-graze na yan, nag yan. Hindi na muna, ano yan, kasi matataba na sila. Ready for, ano yan, ready for slaughtering na yan. Kakatayin na kagad. And baboy, at of course, yung nabanggit ko kanina, pork bellies and bacon. Nakagutom. Dairy, yan, uh, milk, butter, whey, and cheese. So, tingnan nyo na lang dyan yung uh, paano mag, maggawa ng butter. No? Parang kulang na lang tinapay. At pwede na tayo mag merienda. Uh, the fifth category is the subcommodities. Cocoa or cacao. Sa atin sa Mindanao, ang dami ng cacao. Dito sa Cavite, when I was still young, marami ng kakao dito. Pero uh, nawala eh. Uh, I could still remember yung kakao. Eh, sinusubso pa nga ng mga bata yun before patuyuin. Kasi meron yung parang slimy, oh, malandas na portion yung kanyang seeds. At yung seeds ang kailangan. Kasi yun yung, yun yung nagiging uh, tablia. No? But other countries... Uh, di tabli yung pinamanufacture ng rather chocolates, the food for the gods. Of course, ang very famous na coffee, no need for the introduction, and you have the frozen concentrated orange juice, as I mentioned earlier, and the sugar na araw-araw natin kinukonsume. Of course, sugar came from the sugar cane, pero hindi sugar cane lang ang pinanggagalingan ng, ng sugar, mayroon din kasi ng sugar bits, no? uh, parang root crop yan. Nakaka-extract din ng sugar. And uh, the category 6 is the miscellaneous agricultural commodities like rubber, lumber or timber, and wool, as I explained even earlier. So that ends um, our module, the first module, uh, our first module. And then I will be sharing with you on our next uh, Siguro, baka i-re-record ko na rin 
uh, the agricultural commodity system. To give you a little uh, teaser on that, no? kung i-imagine ninyo yung agribusiness industry, uh, napansin nyo yung nga tindahan ng uh, gamot, agri ag uh, veterinary products, uh, agricultural supplies. Ang ibig sabihin kasi noon, yung agricultural sector could not survive without other uh, parang players, ano? yung, yung mga nagbebenta ng seeds, eh paano ka magtatanim? Uh, although, pwedeng yung seeds ng tanim mo last year, eh, ipunin mo at yun din ang itanim mo, pwede yun. But, uh, Alam niyo naman, right now, na tayo ay dependent sa mga seeds kasi madalang na sa atin yung nag-iipon ng mga pananim. And also, ang mga crops kasi ngayon ay eh, nagsulputan na yung mga new breeds or new varieties na fast growing, tapos superior in everything, ay eh, in-engineer yan na kung uh, gagamitin niyo yung kanyang buto, ay eh, hindi garanti na katulad siya o true to, true to form o true to type noong pinanggalingan na buto. Uh, yan, yung, yan yung ano yung galing ng mga nag-invento niya na hindi mo makukopya unless ibili ka uli ng buto from them. Uh, yan yung mga engineering sa agriculture at the same time, a business. So, kung business yan, ibig sabihin, babalik at babalik, bibili at bibili at bibili ka ulit sa kanila. So, yung agricultural commodity system ay maraming mga players na naandyan. At uh, titingnan natin ilang ano, sino-sino ba ang uh, bumubuo niyan, yung system na yan. No? So, that's all for now. At uh, hopefully, uh, right now, it's raining uh, hard uh, kung may narinig kayong mga ha, parang patak ng tubig ay eh, because it's raining right now dahil may bagayo ngayong araw na ito. Today is Sunday, October 25 at according sa news bulletin, weather, sa weather ay mayroong bagyo tonight. Kaya um, in-expect ko na tomorrow there will be some problems with the... Uh, our interconnectivity kaya I decided to have this recorded so thank you very much and uh, since this is uh, since it's night right now i will say goodbye pero dahil papanoorin niyo ito sa araw probably uh, say good morning so good morning everybody and thank you very much for listening and uh, hope to meet you soon on our next google meet thank you very much